Hello, hello, this is Tip Top Gaming here today with another MTG Arena news video. Now, really recently I uploaded a video covering the state of the game for November, which is basically their giant November update. So you guys should go check that out. There'll be either a link in the description or a card right here. Either way, I'm going to be covering what they talked about for Historic, because that video got really long and I didn't even get to talk about Historic, um, and so we're going to do that. Back around rotation in September, we announced that we'd launch our first non-rotating non -rotating format, Historic, with the November update. We're here now to share that that means how... We're here now to share what that means, how Historic works, and the new cards that'll soon be available. Our goal is to make Historic a competitive format that pairs with standards, starting with the following. So, this update comes out on the 21st, and with it, 20 new cards. So new cards that have never been in standard will be uh, added to the game. New cards will drop planned every quarter, so we'll get like 80 cards a year, which isn't that great. I mean, like, it's good. I like that they're adding cards so it doesn't feel like old standard, at least for the next year. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what impact those cards have. Ranked Historic Best of 3 Q, November 21st through the 15th. A Historic Best of 3 tournament at the end of the ranked season. And competitive Evergreen Historic events starting in January. So, I'm going to talk about this right off the bat. 20 new cards, or like new cards planned every quarter. So, when they pitched Historic, they were like, this is going to be better than modern. This is going to be better than, you know, they didn't say better than standard. But it's going to be like this because it can change so quickly. Oh, there's an issue with this deck? Let's add a card. Now, they can still do that. However, they made it sound like they'd be adding cards like maybe two or three, maybe a month, like, to impact the meta. Like, change it, like, very quickly. And, you know, that's kind of their pitch for it. And that's not really what we're seeing. Um, it seems like it's just going to be 20 or 80 wild cards out of your pocket if you want them all. Or 3,400 gems. So we're going to get into that. Changing history. Historic is a non-rotating format where cards throughout Magic's history can live together. The differentiating factor for Historic, however, is that it, it is a digital first format. It lets us try new things and grow the format in unique ways. Of course, we are aware that players also want play modes that sync up with paper, and we intend to deliver on that in the long term. Read up on our goals for, you know, going beyond standard here, or check out my video that I just did talking about that. Magic has a deep, rich history of cards and deck archetypes, and we're excited to bring some of those old favorites into MTG Arena. We can't implement everything at once, but as we actively build and expand the format over time, Historic will grow both forward and back, and you'll see the first steps in the new cards coming in what we're calling Historic Anthology 1. <coughs> Sorry. We are kicking things off with 20 new cards in Historic Anthology 1 that have been carefully selected to expand the format in interesting ways. Some are nostalgia plays, some are fun build-arounds to enable new archetypes, and some are powerful new tools. Being purely digital means that we can curate Historic much more actively than is practical for physical magic. Are there enough viable archetypes? We might drop a card or two to create new options. Is it something that's dominating the format that makes it less than healthy? Then we'll step in and address it. And address it. This might It might be a full band, as players are familiar with, or it might be a suspension, where we pull a card from Historic temporarily to see how things change. We can respond quickly, and it gives us the freedom to push boundaries. So this is basically what they said. They were like, yo we can pretty much just change things quickly. And I guess changing history, changing historic, that's kind of what they're going at there. The March of History. Historic fully launches with the November update, bringing new cards, events, and ranks queue. Here's an overview of everything that's coming up. First of all, Histor Historic Anthology 1 will be available this update. These 20 cards can be crafted using wild cards at a one-to-one -one rate, or you can purchase a complete playset of every card. 80 in total, in the store for 3,400 gems. So, you can either get 80 cards, which, so it's 20 cards, but you get 4 copies of all of them, or the Mastery Pass. So they, those cost the same exact amount. I'm sure there are some people who are just basically going to say, hey, they just doubled the price of the Mastery Pass, and I get 80 cards. Because, I mean, and they are, I don't think there's any commons. We'll, we'll take a look at the cards here in a sec, but we'll, we'll see if I, uh, that really is worth the price tag. Historic Launch Event. To go with these new additions, our Historic Launch Event will run from November 21st to the 25th. Entry costs are either 200 gems or 1,000 gold, and you can play as many best of one games as you want, earning cosmetic rewards for five of the new anthology cards along the way. So, when they originally said Historic Events, what they said was, hey, you're going to be able to pay an entry fee and just get all the cards we added. 
But then they took away that two to one wild card ratio and made it a one to one. And so with that, they made it so you don't get daily quest progress. And now you don't get all the cards. Now you're just getting styles. Now, I will probably enter this event um, just because I, I don't plan on being a super big historic player, but at least for the moment, because right now it really does just feel like old standard. But it'll be interesting to see. Also, because I started... Part of the problem with Historic is the game fully launched when Guilds of Ravnica came out. Meaning that a lot of players have from Guilds of, Rav Guilds of Ravnica up. Because like when I came, I'm like, why would I get that stuff? That stuff's going to rotate out first. So I did get a little bit of it, but... My collection of Ixalan Rivals, Dominari, and M19 are very limited. So I've generally avoided Historic because I don't know the cards as well, and I don't have as many of the cards, so it puts me at a disadvantage. But once maybe a year or two from now, when the Historic format is much, much bigger, it'll be interesting to see how that works. Alrighty, ranked Historic. Uh, oh, and one more thing, sorry. They are again charging you gold to play an event and to just earn styles. Just thought I'd mention that. Um... I, uh, with at least the brawl launch event, like, cause this is a, it's a historic launch event, which, you know, that's cool. For the brawl launch event, they actually gave it was this entry fee, and they actually gave you the card. So I'm wondering if they actually are gonna give you the card. They just accidentally didn't put it here. All right, ranked historic. Then once you're ready, jump into best of three ranked historic queue. This also opens on November 21st and will run through January 15th, the day, the day before the release of Theros Beyond Death. Progress in the queue will affect your constructed rank, just like rank standard does, so you'll be able to qualify for mythic championships through your historic play. Um, so, I'm kind of confused. If historic is meant to be like the MTG Arena format, why are they, I mean, even supporting a best of three format? They've clearly made it not their focus, and best of three, is, the only reason that it's really in there is to uh, allow for like tournament play and to like match standard play, but... Since that's not really a thing, it's interesting to see it here, especially saying that they're advertising Ranked Historic as just best of three, when I feel like a lot of players aren't going to do that. But I guess they're saying that the more experienced players want to play best of three, and Historic is for experienced players, so I'm not sure. To close out this Historic launch with a bang, we'll be holding Arena's first major Historic tournament just before the release of Theris Beyond Death, where you'll get a chance to prove your skills in the, in the new format and compete for some epic prizes don't have much to talk about, so I can't really tell you. When Theros Beyond Death releases, Historic will transform, transition to the off-season. We'll have an evergreen best-of-three Historic event, so that competitive Historic players will always have a home, but MTG Arena's focus will turn back to standard until Historic Anthology 2, currently planned for March 2020. So basically, in between the sets, they are releasing these Historic cards to basically be like, Hey, play standard. Oh, standard's kind of dwelling right now. Play, hit, hit, play historic. And um, I think that these historic cards would do a lot better if there was a historic brawl queue. And yet again, I think there should be a brawl queue all the time um, and that there should be historic brawl. But we'll see if they talk about that. Um, and of course, historic will also be playable in the play queue forever. So, I mean... You can play that at any time. You don't have to worry about it. But there is, from what this is saying, there is no best of one historic ranked. So I will not be playing historic ranked. Uh, part of the reason I love best of one is that if something pops up, like generally it's really quick to finish out a game. I mean, not really quick, but compared to a best of three, it is extremely quick. Uh, Historic will always be playable in the play queue for quick casual. Data shows that players don't often stick around for games 2 and 3 in a no-consequence -conse queue-like play. This leads to fewer players in the queue and worse matches all around. For serious Historic play, the ranked queue, an evergreen event, will offer best of 3, but casual play works better in best of 1. While playing Historic in the play queue does not reward daily win progress, all other game modes discussed above will. So... While playing Historic in the play queue. So it sounds like if you decide that you're going to play in the best of three, you still get your wins? That's what it sounds like. So they are allowing, I guess, Historic players to technically get themselves in. Because Evergreen means, like, th there's always going to be a best of three play queue. Making history. So what do you? So wh wh what will you get to play with in all these new events? Answering that question is quite a challenge. Magic has had a long history, and each set for the past 26 years has had its share of powerhouses, nostalgia, and offbeat cards looking for a good home. We compared personal favorites, surveyed people from all over the building, and dug through website after website in search of the right card. Ultimately, with only a handful of slots to fill, we need to narrow things down. 
These cards would have several core goals to fulfill. In order to separate Historic from just being Old Standard plus Throne Valdrain, we looked for cards that could drive decks that wouldn't exist in the format. So there's going to be cards that can... These cards are going to be the things that define Historic decks. We want some new tools for players who play competitively, and so cards that had performed well in past standard formats or even showed up in modern and beyond were often part of the conversation, so they want to push the power level. It was important to demonstrate the range of cards that live in Historic, so we looked at cards that are very popular for cubes and in Commander, a format with a very long reach. So, I mean, if they're adding 20 cards at a time, and they're adding remastered sets, which we talked about in the last set, it is theoretically possible that in the future we get, like, full commander, you know, and we start... Because think about it. Let's imagine 10 years from now, because MGGO has been alive for a very long time. 10 years from now, you know, st there's been all these sets. There's been, like, 40 more sets of standard, and they've had plenty of time to add cards. Maybe they can start, like, oh, you released a commander precon? You can buy it and get a code for MTG Arena. Adding codes to more things. That's what I think Wizards needs to do. It gets, not only does it, when I open my booster pack, wow, I get this code, that means I should go check it out. But it also incentivizes players who play Magic Arena to buy physical paper. So it, it drives paper sales and it drives Magic, and it drives Arena downloads. I think that they should be putting more codes in boosters, maybe not even every booster, but maybe like, you know, one in four boosters have a code for Arena, and bundles should have a code for Arena, Boxes should have a code for Arena. You know, the Brawl deck should have had a code for Arena, which they said they would have done if, you know, timing aligned better. But generally, things should have code for Arena. And in the future, if we manage to get every single card in Arena, can you imagine being able to just go and get, like, a Commander Precon? And now you have that Commander Precon in-game. I think that is really awesome. We are considering limiting ourselves... To, oh, it was important to dem... Yeah, we are considering limiting ourselves to, that are, to cards that are legal and modern or pioneer, but at the end of the day, Historic isn't intended to be either of those. A, sma a smattering of legal cards doesn't suddenly make a full format. We'd rather let Historic stand on its own terms and not incorporate incomplete versions of something else. We, we, we'll learn about more about hist what Historic wants as all of you dig into it, and future anthologies may lean more in one direction or another as a result. But today we want to provide cards for a variety of approaches, from casual brews to cut through competition. We think that there's something here for everyone, but enough standing around, let's take a look. So, again, what I think they need to do to make historic work is do, make it not standard, standard sucked. <laughs> like, right now it is standard, so I think that, that they have that idea down pat, that they need to make it more than just old standard. Two... I think they need to add Historic Brawl. Think about it. You're adding a whole nother group of players who like Brawl, but maybe don't like Historic. You're adding a whole nother group of them to be able to get to want these cards. And three, I think they need to support best of one ranked and maybe even have it separate like rank. So I think they need to make it its own format, not try to piggyback it off standard, which, yeah. So to, they, they have, wow, they changed this. This used to just be the pictures of the cards. Now they have an in-game picture. I'm going to read this down here, then we'll go through the cards. To dive deeper into the possibilities these cards offer, we have decks to share from you from some of the first folks to tinker with them. Our friends upstairs at Tabletop Studio. Here's Ian to tell you more. So why don't we take a look at this? So let's start over here. So Sarah's Sarah Ascendant, Lifelink, 1-1, one, one, Human Monk. As long as you have 30 more life, it gets plus 5, plus 5, and has flying. So I've actually played against this card before in my friend's life game deck so they're clearly trying to push a life gain deck here and hey you know what does that say whenever another creature enters the battlefield you gain one life on soul warden i think they're definitely trying to push a life gain deck you know just you know that's just my theory here um but both of them are one ones for one in white which is what white really likes it's a lot of little guys that both do a ton with healing so i think that's really cool also, may I mention that Sarah Ascendant would be very, I mean, pretty good in a white life gain brawl deck because you start at 25 life. Either way, then we have Kinsbale Cavalier, which says knights you control have double strike for four. That is pretty crazy because that means he himself has double strike. And so obviously they are trying to push a knights deck. So what you can really do here is look at these cards and tell you what are they trying to get at here. Now here's another thing. We technically now have a new um we have a new creature type oh sorry kithkin which is interesting then we have treasure hunt 
uh, it's a two cost sorcery. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non land card. Then put all cards revealed this way into your hand. Wow, that's powerful. And that's a common. Okay, so I think that um, a lot of decks will run this. Anything blue would much rather run this than um, anticipate, I think. I mean, I guess you might not get what you want, but you get to. I guess, no, this isn't. I guess this isn't as great as I'm making it out to be, because if you could hit just an online permanent, and maybe you don't want a bunch of land, so we'll see. Um, but we'll see, yeah. Then Distant Melody. It's a four cost. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for each permanent. Okay, so draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. I think this is a really good card and choice, because Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan, which were both very, very, like, focused on... Um, they were focused on creatures, or not on creatures, yeah, on creature types. I think that's really cool. Now, I'm going to show you something here in a second. Now, I don't know what the original borders for these cards are. However, they do have updated borders. So, if it had an older border, it now is updated. But, you'll notice that they do have the set logo. They didn't make, like, a historic anthology set logo. They just have their original set logo, which I think is very cool. Next, we have Crypt Breaker. It's a 1-1 uh, one, one for 1, which seems to be a big theme, and I guess that's because powerful cards in older formats cost very little. You can pay 2, tap it, and discard a card to create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. And then you can tap 3 untapped zombies you control and draw a card, and you lose a life. So, for 1, that's pretty good. I don't know exactly what they're trying to push here. I mean, I guess, I mean, there's not much here. Um, maybe, maybe they're gonna add madness at one point, but I, I don't know exactly what this could be hinting at. Maybe just zombies in general. We'll see. Then we have Hypnotic Spectre, which is a 2-2 two, two for 3 flying, and whenever it deals damage to an opponent, that player discards a card at random. Kind of boring. Like, honestly, they have many, many years of cards that they can add from, and these are kind of boring ones. However, the next card is an amazing card that sees tons of play, and we'll probably see play in Brawl a ton, in Historic Brawl, because, you know, you can only do that through a direct challenge. Um, but they should not do that. They should make a Historic Brawl or whatever they want to call it. Rumble. I don't really care. Pyrexian Arena. Three cost enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and lose a life. Now, you are paying three to do nothing, but as soon as it gets your turn, every turn you are drawing a card, which is very powerful. Next, we have Tendrils of Corruption. Tendrils of Corruption deals X damage to target creature, and you gain X life where X is the number of swamps. So I guess they're going here for, like, a mono-black kind of thing, or maybe a black devotion, because, you know, devotion's coming out. So anything that has multiple black in its cost, take a, keep an eye out on that for devotion. Then we have Cl now Red, I think they need to be really careful of, because Red was super powerful. Clin Fiend is a 2 cost 1 2. Great, it has 1 power. But whenever you cast it into a sorcery, it gets plus 3 plus 0. So this is very similar to that flying thing, but not flying, and so that's good. I think this was actually would actually have been a more fair card than that stupid flying thing that whenever you deal combat damage or uh, non combat damage to an opponent, it gets more powerful. Either way, then we have Goblin Matron. It's a 3 cost 1 1. Great, more 1 1s. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a goblin card, reveal that card, and put it in your hand. That's awesome. I want a goblin deck. Uh, this is actually from Modern Horizons, which is interesting. I also think that that means it's more possible if they ever did like another Modern Horizons that they just added the entire set, or at least a lot of it. Because remember, they're doing remastered sets, so they could do Modern Horizons remastered. Either way, this one's cool. Hid 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 bleh, second right. It's a four cost instant, and if player if target player has exactly ten life, it deals ten damage to them. So if they have ten life, kill them, which is cool. I mean. It can be sometimes hard to get them to an exact life, but that I could see that being played in some gimmicky combo where you play that one card that like sets someone's to life total to 10. Okay, this is a 2 cost 1-1, one, one, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. It is an elf, so it's clear they're trying to push elves here. Now, there was some powerful elves in Dominaria, and there are three, the all three green creatures are elves, so they are clearly pushing a, a green thing here. Fauna Shaman, uh, 2 cost 2-2, two, two. pay 1, discard a card, or creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. That is crazy. Take this thing and throw it away. Then we have Imper Im Imperious Perfect, uh, 3 cost 2-2, two, two. so yeah, other elf creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1, and you can tap to create a 1-1 one, one green elf, war uh, elf warrior token. I think it'd be really fun 
to build an elf deck. I'd love to build a historic elf deck. Maybe that'll be the first thing I do. I'll build a historic elf deck. All right, now we have a gruel card, Burning Tree Emissary. It's a two cost, two, two, and when it enters the battlefield, create two. So it's kind of a free creature, but it also has another use. Say you only have green mana, you can technically pay for this with only green mana and then end up with a red mana out of it. So that's very interesting. Then we have Captain Sisse, which I think will totally be a commander, and I'll probably build this commander in a historic brawl deck. Um, it, it is a 2-2 two, two for 4, and it lets you tap to search your library for a legendary card, reveal that card, and put it into your hand. Now, that does not say creature, so legendary lands work. Legendary instance, legendary... I don't know if there's any instance, but there are legendary sorceries, um, legendary artifacts, all of that. And, of course, it, it, in a brawl sense, it would have to be limited to green-white, but this card is really cool. I'm totally building a deck around her. Unfortunately, she's a rare. I'd almost prefer she was a mythic, because I think I have more mythics than rares right now, but... Then we have Ornithopter, which, if I'm not mistaken, caused a ton of problems for being a zero-cost creature. This will be the first zero-cost in standard, but who knows? It might not end up being a problem. And then we have Mindstone, which uh, is a two-cost artifact, and you can tap to add colorless, and then you can pay some amount and tap and sacrifice it to draw a card. I believe that's two. Then we also have Dark Steel Reactor, which is a four-cost artifact with Indestructible, and it says whenever at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a charge counter on Dark Steel Reactor. When it has 20 or more charge counters on it, you win the game. So this is basically, hey, 20 turns later you win, or you probably put this in a proliferate deck and start proliferating it. So um, that could also be a really fun historic deck. It's like a proliferate or maybe artifacty kind of deck, or I mean, I guess that could just go in a really stally deck. Overall, I think they're trying to push towards a white, white life gain deck. Merfolk. Uh, that would be my guess for blue. Um, mono black, like devotion. Red, like goblins. Green elves. And yeah, multicolored awesomeness. So why don't we go back into the article? And we're going to go take a look at what they say they're going towards. So this is Esper Doom stack. So this was a standard deck, but what? let's see, what, what did they add? So they added Phyrexian Arena, and that's it. So they basically took a standard deck and threw in Phyrexian Arena. That's fine. I mean, I guess they do have um, historic cards in here, so Eldest Reborn, um, and I guess they have Mindstone too. So, I mean, this is a little bit more than that. Um, they have some of the older lands as well, but... Um, it's interesting, they just, so this is, uh, aggro, so this has Tibble along with, so this is kind of what they think is happening, Hideru second right, now, I will say, if you are running a deck full of 1-1s, one -ones and you can very specifically get someone down to 10 life, this is an instant, it is a little expensive, but it is an instant, so that's important to note. Then we have Sisei's Legends, so this is a, similar to a deck I would build, um, now, I don't necessarily agree with having three Vivians. I guess this is a historic deck, so that you probably want a couple more. But in my Brawl deck, I'm going to have stuff like this. But you only need one of each because she's fetching them, which is cool. I mean, and then obviously you're going to have legendary sorcery stuff. Now, also, may I mention, I think Kethis would totally, like, a Kethis Brawl deck would totally run Captain Sisse. Then we have Hypnotic Discard, which is discard. So here's kind of what they're thinking that you're going to make with these cards. Um, I'm not saying you're not. Um, but as a personal fan of resource denial cards... Oh, wait, is this... Okay. We hope that this fun, this fu this and future updates inspire players to brew and keep the historic format fresh. Zach and I barely scratched the surface here, and we look forward to seeing what you all come up with. Of course, these decks are just a few ideas, and these 20 cards are just the beginning. Historic is a living format that will change and adapt in ways that only a digital format can. We'll be watching closely. Your feedback is important. I'm sorry this has been such a long video, but they have released so much information. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, I guess you can ask them down below. If you guys like the video and want to stay up to date with everything MTG, uh, so hit that subscribe button and the bell. Hit the like button. It means a lot to me. I hope I'm going to stop taking away your time. See ya. Bye.